Hello, YouTube world. I want to talk to you a little bit about the U.S. Open Golf Tournament, which just concluded yesterday, and about the professional sports world in general. And I want to show you just how blatant the rigging is uh, in professional golf and all professional sports and the just pervasive satanic symbolism and, and imagery that we see everywhere in professional sports. And, you know, this weekend, uh, you know, Saturday and yesterday, I, I had planned on, you know, towards the end of the day, uh, five, six o'clock, just turn it on the TV set for a little while and relaxing and just watching a little bit of the U.S. Open. I, I'm a, I used to really be into golf and play a lot of golf myself. I don't anymore. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, it'd be a chance to kind of try to get away from just the, the constant, the constantly depressing news uh, with the virus, wildfires, riots, politics, on and on and on. But it's unbelievable how you can't even turn on the television set for a minute or two without being bombarded with satanic symbolism, even in sports, commercials, everything else. And, I, you know, I feel like I need to get out and, you know, then I need to pick up, uh, you know, my phone and film it and record it and document it. So it's incredible. There's just never a, a break from this satanic onslaught. And you literally can't even sit down and turn on the TV and relax for a minute or two with this. So, yeah, if you want to relax, don't, on the, don't turn on the TV set, I guess. But let's go ahead and dig in, uh, dig into this uh, right here. So I want to start with playing a short clip okay. from uh, Sports Center a couple nights ago. It's okay. Uh, number six, Yankees. So they're playing the top 10 plays, and notice they're at the number six play. First off, they don't just show the number six. They also show you the spelled out number six, so you have six six instead of just six. Blue Jays. I mean, the Yanks hit six. And, of course, then they show you the six again. Here, the six in the lower left-hand corner. Six home runs, and then decided we'll sure play defense, too. Gardner Joe Panic out there. Slide. Brett Gardner comes in slide. He's got it. The Yanks went at 10 seven. We're back to the top five in six seconds. Six seconds. Did you hear what he said there? We're back with the top five in six seconds. And so they go to this quick commercial break. And uh, if you'll notice, it is a uh, six-second break until the number five play. So... Think about this. This seems like no coincidence. And during these top 10 plays, I don't watch Sports Center much, but I don't think there's any way that after the number 10 play, they do a 10 second pause on the number 9 play. Or during the number 9 play, they do a 9 second pause on the number 8 play. Or after the number 8 play, they do an 8 second, eight second pause on the number 7 play. And after the number 7 play, they do a 7 second pause on the number 6. And on and on and on. I, I, I don't. I've never seen that before where they do a, you know, a particular number of second pause after that play before the next play. So isn't it interesting that they happen to, to single out the number six and they happen to do a six second break till the number five play? And is it interesting that you have that six appearing three times that last six second break is the third six and six, six, six. So let's look at this one more time. It's okay. <laughs> Number six. So here's your first six. Yankees, Blue Jays. I mean, the Yanks hit six. Here's your second six. Home runs, and then decided we'll play defense, too. Joe Panic out there. Brett Gardner comes in slide. He's got it. The Yanks went at 10 7. And we're back with the top five in six seconds. Six. Back with the top five in six seconds. Five in six seconds. And of course, there's your third six. Six, 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 just like Revelation chapter 13 in the Bible. And, of course, the times we're living in with this vaccine coming out, is it the mark of the beast? Very well could be. We know never has Revelation chapter 13, the number of the beast, 666, been in play more than these days. And they, they mock you with this constantly. So just point this out so look for it yourself you'll just notice this hidden in plain sight all the time whether it be news sports commercials whatever six 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 so let's go ahead and look at the u.s open and i was watching saturday 
just kind of trying to relax and take it in. And I caught a few things that really jumped out to me. And the the first thing was this putt by Bryson DeChambeau that he made. Let's go ahead and look at it. So you may notice here, it's not really easy to see from this video, but this is a very sharp right to left putt, very sharp. And you'll notice it passes below the hole. That... So, so here you see clearly, this is a right to left, severely sloping putt, a ton of break, and he misses it below the hole. And somehow this thing just dumps into the hole uh, from below the hole, which is impossible, ball, which is impossible by the laws of physics. Force and mass are working against you. You know, now when you're on the high side of the hole, sure, the, those will drop in all the time because force and mass will push the ball into the hole and it will naturally drop in. But when you miss the hole on the low side with the severe slope, it does not roll back in, back up the hill. And this, like I pointed out before, check out my videos if you haven't seen them on the uh, PGA Championship uh, that Justin Thomas won. I think that was the 2017 PJ Championship. Uh, you can go check out my video on that, and I show you there were some really sketchy putts that were clearly manipulated. And so something's going on here, in my belief. There's either a magnet in the ball. There's even a, either a magnet in the cup. There's either some kind of magnetism or computer system on the green. Or literally, you know, who knows? It, it could be a spirit manipulating this. As the Bible tells us, there are demonic spirits all around us, all throughout this earth. But, so, the Shambo, and he knew it. He knew he missed that putt and was shocked it went in. So there you see the sharp break, and he's missed it below the hole. Oh, but it, but it, it. Watch how much this breaks. How much this breaks below the hole to the left. And it's clearly below the hole. But it goes back up the hill and goes in. And watch his reaction. And he knows it. And Bryson DeChambeau, this, this guy is the kind of mad scientist. He knows that defies physics. It's absurd. And he says, what was that? He thought he'd run out of speed, but he caught the lower edge and falls in. He's kind of just baffled. So I, I don't know what you think. To me, that was incredibly sketchy, and it got my attention. And here, here was the uh, post-round interview with Mike Tirico, and they show this putt again. And let's let's look at this and take a look at something. At first, I thought I missed it right. <laughs> so take a look. They they have the shot tracer on this, but let's look at what happens. Three quarters of the way. Look at your That's right. Look at your reaction. That's right. Notice when it starts breaking harshly and goes below the hole. Yeah, they, they don't follow the ball below the hole. They don't give you the true path. They make it look like it was going in all the way, like it was a good putt. You know, they don't. They don't show. You know, they don't show. They try to deceive you. This ball is clearly out down here below the hole. That's probably your best view. This ball's clearly below the hole, but they don't follow it with the shot tracer with the ball. They make it look like it goes in the cup. I missed it left. So it's distorting your reality what actually happened. See, they follow the ball 
all the way until it breaks harshly and drops below the hole. See, it, they're following correctly, but now, now they lose sight of this ball once it drops below the hole right here. They don't show the path because that would look really funny to someone. And even your average idiot out there might question this if they saw this weird looping and they said, wait a second, had the ball, there was a sharp right to left break, had that ball go back up the hill and in. I missed it left and then I'm, oh my God. So some, uh, you know. What is that? Is visual trickery uh, by NBC there. It makes you wonder. To me, I think there was something going on with that putt. So. Now I want to show you uh, another thing I noticed from Saturday's coverage at the end of the day, a shot DeChambeau hit. Now, what we want to pay attention to, to is the bounce this ball took is how this thing just skyrocketed off this mound. So we see the ball land short of the green softly, and it gets. And I apologize. I know this video is not great. It's difficult to see. So we see the ball roll oh, onto the green, the and it's almost to a dead stop right here on this mound, it's come off. barely moving. Oh, and notice how fast that ball moves off the slope. It's just and a whole three feet. Of golf that this golf course, he just yanks it out of there. That's going to come off the slope. Not even notice how much faster that ball starts it's moving. Look at that. This is just a whole. You know, the, the ball had almost, the ball had almost, and if you watch this, you'll see here before it gets on the green, the ball almost completely stopped. It really is almost completely stopped here when it gets just onto the green. just... You know, it's really almost it's really almost coming to a stop here at the front of the green. Yanks it out of there. That's gonna come off. And then it just starts flying down this mound. Slower. Why don't you even try to hit a fairway? Look at that. This is just he just yanks it out of there. That's gonna come off. Slower. Why don't you even? I mean, to me, this ball, what looks natural to me is if it would have stopped about here. If it would have come off that slope a little bit and stopped maybe in here. Because, yeah, that ball is going to move off that mound, you know, and it's going to move off that mound a little bit. But how it just skyrockets like it shot out of a cannon to three feet. To me, you know, my experience playing golf, and of course I'm not on that course, but it looks like it should have stopped about here. Now, some people say, well, those U.S. Open greens are really fast. They can be. I'll tell you what, these greens this week were a lot slower uh, than, than what I've seen in the past. These greens were much slower than what we've seen in the past at Shinnecock in 2017 and, you know, really to a whole lot of other venues. These greens looked a lot slower than the last time they had this championship at Winged Foot in 06 when Phil collapsed. So something to me looked really off with this. just... We see it, it's almost comes, you know, it's, it seems like it's almost coming to standstill at this point. Right about here. And it just skyrockets. It just skyrockets off this mound. So I don't know. You know, you be the judge. Uh, you be the judge on this. Maybe it's possible that was just natural, uh, the, the roll of the ball. But to me, it looked like something was in place, speeding that up uh, off the mound where it should have been a putt from about 20 feet that went to three feet. So just follow me the rest of the video and, and you see what you think about that. Um, 
So I want to go ahead and just point out a, a small clip from the post, uh, the golf coverage uh, on Golf Channel right afterwards. But this week, you know, he's, he's driving it beautifully. He's hitting a lot of greens, leading in greens and regulation. Uh, he's, you know, T60, he's got 66 putts, I think. So he's talking about Bubba Watson, but notice he says 66 twice, 66 putts. He's, you know, T60, he's got 66 putts. I, uh, he's, you know, T60, he's got 66 putts. Uh, he's... And, I, you know, I apologize. This video quality is not great here if it's kind of difficult to hear. You know, T60, he's got 66 putts. I, uh, he's, you know, T60, he's got 66 putts. I, uh, he's, you know, T60, he's got 66 putts. I think he's T. Okay, um, you know, there he clearly says 66, and I, I'm going to get into that here in a minute as to just how often we see this 66 uh, in sporting events, including yesterday. So I want to point something out. This was a video of mine from a little over a year ago, Tiger Woods compared to Jesus on Fox News. And this was right after he won the Masters. And if you follow my channel, you'll know that I did a, a video on Tiger Woods winning the Masters. Uh, you know, I, I'd really argue it's probably the best video I've ever done. I, I really thought that I was on the money. I, I don't like to pat my own back. I'm a nobody. Uh, but I thought the information in there was really good. That's why I felt good about it. And I thought there's a lot in there that could wake people up. And my video on Tiger Woods winning the Rig Masters last year was blocked by YouTube within like five days. So anyhow, this video, let's take a look here. We'll notice, uh, you know, Bryson DeChambeau spent an enormous amount of time in that number six spot in the world golf rankings last year. Fine, the number six player either going into the tournament or after the tournament is the winner. So this week, and something I've talked about, if you follow my channel a lot in these rig golf tournaments, is that the player that is in the number six uh, world golf ranking spot often wins the tournament. The player ranked number six going into the week often wins the tournament, or the player going or the player winning the tournament is number six after winning the tournament. April fourteenth, right after the Masters, we see number six in the world. We see Tiger Woods. And as I pointed out before, this is not the first time. Last year, right after winning the British Open, Francesco Molinari, who is coincidentally number seven right now, became the number six ranked player in the world. Now, one week ago, going into the Masters, the number six player in the world was Bryson DeChambeau. So myself and others thought there might be a, a decent shot that he was going to win the Masters this year. Obviously, it was set up for Tiger. Now, this this subscriber on my channel pointed this out. So, you know, that's something we see frequently when Francesco Molinari won the British Open. Um, what was that? Two years ago, he was the number six player in the world after it. And so notice from this video, Tiger Woods and Bryson DeChambeau are kind of close buddies uh, DeChambeau's, who Tiger plays with in the Ryder Cup, they both are sponsored by Bridgestone. They both appear together in Bridgestone commercials. So it was interesting. You had that week, the Masters in 2019. Bryson DeChambeau was the number six player going into that week. And then, uh, then right after that tournament, Tiger Woods. Now, one week ago, going into the right after winning the then right after winning the Masters, Tiger Woods was number six in the world. So you had DeChambeau at number six the week previous, going into the Masters, and Tiger Woods at number six after winning the Masters. We see that so many times, but I want to point out a little more on how DeChambeau. You frequently see the number six with his name, and we're, this will make sense in a minute. Bear with me here. We click on this icon. Excuse me, let me pull this back up. So this this was from uh, DeChambeau's, uh, I believe his Twitter account, 
from the Masters last year, his first round, he posts this scorecard. He shot a 66, and then notice he says he had six birdies on the second nine. What's bizarre about this is he had nine birdies on the day, which is a lot better than six birdies. Why wouldn't you say you had nine birdies total? But he emphasized that he had six birdies on the second nine. That's very weird. Why would you talk about the number of birdies you had on the back nine and not the number of birdies you had total in 18 holes? So he's boasting he has a 66-6 birdie, 6-6-6. And I had nine week ago, as we've noted. So something else trust me together, right? And here we have DeShambo and uh, Tiger Woods and their bridge right now. So I'm just gonna play this quick commercial. Yeah, that most golfers want to hit it straight. Uh, well I stop and notice how much different DeShambo looks here. We're gonna get into that in a minute. Fine. Thanks to its softer compression. So you know Tiger wins the rigged masters last year. And, uh, one of my subscribers had said, we talked about this video in the comments and it said, you know, DeShambo, his time is coming that he's into the occult and his time is coming. Uh, very shortly, he's going to win a major and boy, was that prophetic. Um, so concerning the clips I just showed you about the roll of the ball on the putting green and with the approach shot that looked bizarre, I want to show you a little evidence here. There may be more than you think that they, the, there really may be manipulation going on in golf. Let's take a look at this clip. Part of his day included coding and green reading with one of his protégés. Check this out. Oh, we're close. I'm going to move it over here just a little bit. Okay. So you see this? This is a kid. This is a kid literally showing Tiger Woods how he can control a golf ball with a computer. <laughs> See, they're mocking you right on the plane side. Oh, we're close. I'm going to move it over here just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. you one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Mocking you right in your face, showing you they can control the golf ball with magnets and computers. If that's not enough for you, let's look a little more evidence. Take a look at this putt. Watch this. Clearly playing it right to left. That was just pure wind. A wind gust. No, you know, and you hear one one announcer start laughing. The other guy says it's a wind gust. No, it's not. Take a look at this when they show the panoramic view. There's no wind. I think somebody gave him one of those trick balls. Look at this. There's barely a little bit of a breeze. You know, they weighted on the one side. <laughs> it just went sideways. I mean, you got to be kidding me. This is a really gentle breeze, and they're saying the wind did that. I mean, let's look at this again. Look at what this really ball does. Right to left. That was just pure wind. A wind gust. Wind gust. Yeah, right. I think somebody gave him one of those trick balls. Well, and he just says there, I guess, I think somebody gave him one of those trick balls. So he is. There he mocks you. So he, he probably knows he's mocking you because he knows that was a magnet or a computer. You know, that all weighted on the one side. It just went sideways. And here we see in the look of the background that there's just a gentle breeze, not more than probably 10 miles an hour of wind. And I'm going to tell you what, I've played a lot of golf in my life, and I've played golf in 40-plus mile an hour winds, and I've never seen anything remotely like this, where a ball just goes the other direction against the break of the green. See, watch, it's breaking. It's breaking toward the hole. And with no slope, it just fell the other way. A wind gust. I think somebody gave him one of those trick balls. You know, that all weighted on the one side. It just went I think somebody gave him a trick ball. And then one one more time, let's take a look at this. Another video about these magnetically and computer-controlled golf balls. <laughs> See, 
So you see here a young woman. She's got a, a trick golf ball, uh, you know, magnetically computer controlled here. And by the way, I want to thank uh, this video with Tiger, this video with Justin Rose, and this video were all given to me and sent by subscribers. So I want to thank you very much for your help on that. I truly appreciate you uh, for showing me those videos. So let's uh, move on to this next clip from the U.S. Open. So Azinger just said there, this is validation on steroids. That's the key thing to listen to. So what Paul Azinger, the announcer, is talking about here is how Bryson DeChambeau, for anybody that follows golf, knows that he's made these massive changes in the last year where he's decided that he's going to put on a bunch of weight and be like a 240-pound linebacker. And his whole focus is going to be hitting the driver as far as he possibly can. And he's not worried about hitting fairways. That he just wants to hit the ball as far as he can. And that's how he believes he's going to win majors. Something we need to look at here is he's gained about 40 to 50 pounds of muscle in the last year. And I don't know this, but when I look at him, it looks to me like a guy that's either on steroids or HGH. So let's hear this again. It's working out. This is validation on steroids. Validation on steroids. Talk about tongue in cheek. You know, is, is that a Freudian slip? Is he rubbing it in your face because he knows he's on steroids? And, uh, but it's working out. This is validation on steroids. And, uh, but it's working out. This is validation on steroids. This is validation on steroids, and anybody that's watched any golf the last year will know what I mean. And even if you look at DeChambeau's face, his body looks totally different, and his sleeves are longer, you can't tell, but his arms are really large now, and, we're, and his shoulders are very broad. We're going to take a look at a picture for him just a year ago, and his face even looks different, and it even looks like he's got, you know, kind of the acne going, and... Uh, you know, let's take a look. This is a photo of DeChambeau from, I believe this was like July or August of 2019, the 3M Championship. And you can see there just how vastly different DeChambeau looks. And apparently he was around 40 pounds lighter at that point. They list him now at 6'1", 240. And it looks here like he's probably not even 200 pounds, maybe around 200. So he's gained you know, 40 to 50 pounds of muscle in the last year, which is, uh, and he attributes it to eating a lot and training. And I, he hasn't even mentioned weight training. He just, and, he, you know, he probably does, but he just hits a crazy amount of golf balls. And he says he's he's attributed to eating a lot. Well, I, I don't know anybody, and I know a lot of guys, including myself, that have worked out diligently in the past. I don't know anybody that's gained 40, 50 pounds of muscle in a year. Only way I know anybody to do it is when they've used steroids. So quite uh, quite interesting there, if you ask me. I, I firmly believe something's going on with him, that he's either on steroids or HGH. And so different time. We'd be remiss to not mention how just absurd this U.S. Open was with the social distancing. And, I mean, they took all the fun out of it. And it was just it was just as bizarre as could get. Just so strange. And here we see the scoring tent. Different type of U.S. Open. Social distancing going on even in the scoring room there, which doubles as Wingfoot's pro. You know, they've got even the social distancing when you sign your scorecard. Different type of U.S. Open, social distancing going on even in the scoring. 
And then finally, let's take a look at right after DeChambeau wins. So we have no fans there, of course. Yep, there's the screen there. Just saw his mom. Okay. And so they have his parents on a television screen greeting him. It looks like he's even socially distanced from the TV screen. I don't know why he needs to be more than six feet away from a TV screen. And then, of course, we just have a few of these volunteers in masks clapping. You know, it's just sad that this is what we've been, uh, and by the way, you get a better look at his body here as to how large his arms and shoulders are compared to this last picture I showed you. Um, I mean, man, I, you know, th this is one year ago, that's him. I mean, wow, that's it, just a massive transformation. But this is just so sad to see the only people there, the volunteers for the tournament and the employees wearing masks. Yep, no doubt. So th this is a... Uh, this is your this is your celebration after winning the toughest golf tournament in the world. You know, it's just incredibly sad, and you know, in a way, I kind of feel sorry for the guy that uh, this kind of accomplishment. It's like going to a funeral, no fans there, no nothing, and this world is just falling apart, and. You know, what's sad about this is I was a pretty competitive golfer, uh, as, you know, a few up to a few years ago, I had really been trying to play the mini tours, and I, I was a pretty good player, not great. I got my handicap to a plus three, and I was legitimately trying to play the mini tours, and really my biggest goal was to qualify and play in the U.S. Open, and it just consumed me. It was just my driving force in life. It was an idol for me. So I can really relate to these guys like Bryson DeChambeau or a lot of these professional golfers of just being driven by your own glory. And it's very deceptive, you know, and I feel for them because right now it's just not worth it at all. There's not even any, you know, you you go out there, you're not playing in front of fans, you win, and it's a bunch of, you know, it's four or five guys standing around you and mass clapping. And it's just, you know, it's very sad because they're deceived. And I've been there where my entire goal was my own glory. Golf was my idol. And I was really, I was just beating balls every day, every evening at night, three, four hours, you know, trying to make it to the mini tours. And, and I really wanted to go play in the U.S. Open. And, you know, praise God, you know, I, I really started focusing more and more on him. And I'm not really picked up a golf club in the last year. Um, but it's just kind of sad to see, you know, these guys who are, who are out there playing the PGA Tour and enjoy, you know, they can't even enjoy it now. There aren't any fans and, and they're giving away their souls by doing this. You know, it, it, you're not, when you're making golf, your idol and fame, you know, you're on the path to hell and, and siding with, with Satan. So it's just, it's kind of sad to see, and I can relate to him because, you know, I never made it to the professional level, but I know what it's like to just be consumed by that, where it's your idol in your whole life and all you eat, sleep, drink, and think is golf. And so I just want to look at a, uh, a few photos from the, from the last few days in sports. And so here we see that number six getting rubbed in your face. This is the, Top story from ESPN a few days ago, only six teams have done the impossible stop LeBron in the playoffs. There's that six again. What do you want to bet that stays at six teams? I'm sure they'll rig this puppy for the Lakers this year. Here's the U.S. Open trophy. I'd never noticed this. You have a winged angel on top of it. 
I, I had never noticed that till this year. I, I, this is probably, you know, Ashtaroth or Ishtar or Diana, the fallen angel from the Bible. So the, this idol. So I'd never noticed a winged angel on top of the U.S. Open trophy. I want to just briefly talk about how we see the 666. We saw it all throughout the day yesterday. So here on the 16th hole, notice how they set this up to show you a 666. They only show two names, and you've got the three sixes here, 666. Six, six. And you, you may have noticed, as I said earlier, you know, Bryson DeChambeau, we've seen... Um, We've seen the six associated with him a lot in the past. Like I mentioned, the 66, the six birdies on his Twitter. So notice, uh, you may have noticed this already, his winning score was minus six, and he won by six shots total. Minus six wins by six, six, six. If that's not enough for you, look at the scorecard at the bottom, you'll see a six, six, six. Three players a plus six, 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 six. Why this really stands out as strange is why did they choose to present the leaderboard that way? Because let's look here, ESPN.com, the final scores, you had one, you had one, two, three, like four, five players. You had five players finish at plus six. Let's see, look here, Tony Fino all the way to Zach Johnson. One, two, three, four, five players finish at plus six. So if you had five players finish at plus six, why in the world do you have only three players listed here? And it seems like it's blatantly done to display a six, 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 six. You, you want to tell me you think that's just blatant coincidence? DeChambeau wins by wins at six under. He wins by six. Then we have a six 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 at the bottom. So and then yesterday, just I I caught the very tail end of the Chiefs Chargers game, and right before they go to sixty minutes, there's your six. The last player they show was number sixty six for the Chargers. Six 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 sixty minutes six six six. And they literally, right after this clip, went to commercial in 60 minutes. This is the last image you saw from the field. Then just briefly, turning on the Sunday night game, they throw up this graphic. Tom Brady, highest run percentage in game started by Tom Brady. What a random thing to talk about. 66%, and this is from 2001, 19 years ago. 66%. Then they go... Uh, then they go right from that image to third and six, so it's a six six six. From this image, sixty six to third and six, six six six. And then you know, right after that, they show this clip on the screen of this lineman for Seattle, number sixty six. So you know, it just never stops. The six, the six six, the six six six, all the time, over and over and over again, and. Let me check here. I think I've covered everything just about that I wanted to talk about here concerning the U.S. Open and, and this rigging. Um, and actually, one other thing I was going to point out is, you know, with how absurd this is with the virus testing. So Scotty Scheffler, one of the best players in the world, and to show you here that in the PJ Championship that just finished up in August, Scotty Scheffler was tied for second going to the final round, and he may have played in the final group. I don't remember if he's in the final group or the second to last group, but he was tied for second, one shot back. He finished in, in a tie for fourth in the PGA Championship. He didn't even get to play in the tournament. He tested positive for the you-know-what virus, and he withdrew. And this is one of the best players in the world, Scotty Scheffler. You wonder what's going on with that. Is this a ritual? Was was this like some kind of ritual? Um, I guarantee you this. You'll never, ever see Tiger Woods test positive. I promise you that. Uh, you'll you'll probably never, ever see Brooks Kepka or DeChambeau or one of these really big names test positive. You know you'll never see te Tiger Woods test positive unless it's some kind of ritual. But I saw this and I wondered, you know, the guy... 
who was, who was in second place going into the final round of the PGA Championship, one of the best players in the world, he tests positive with withdrawals. Maybe a ritual in play here with Scotty Scheffler. But anyhow, Bryson DeChambeau, he is your uh, your U.S. Open champion, Bryson DeChambeau. And like we've shown here, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he knowingly has made a, a deal with the devil or he's kind of oblivious to this. You, you tend to think the kind of money he's making, the endorsements that he probably is in the cult. But I just want to end with these few scriptures that relate to this. 1 John 2, 17, The world passed away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This world that passes away, it's gone. The lust we have in this world for whether it be money, mansions, cars, women, alcohol, drugs, whatever, those lusts are gone. Only he that does the will of God will abide and last forever. And this is Jesus Christ himself speaking, Matthew 19, 24, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And that's why it's so difficult for a lot of these pro professional golfers and athletes is they get into the occult and they get so used to the high life and making millions of dollars it you know that they're not thinking about their eternity or death. And that's why Jesus Christ says this. You're totally deceived when you're really wealthy and rich. When you've got millions of dollars, you're totally deceived and you're thinking that really means something, that money's going to really mean something to save you, it's not. You could die this minute, you're going to be burning in hell for all of eternity. Every one of us, we're one breath, one heartbeat away from hellfire. Mark 8, 36, For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, what does it matter if you go out there and you win majors and make millions of dollars, if you if you lose your soul and you burn in hell? Jack Nicholas has 18 majors. What does that matter if you, whatever what you do in this life, none of it matters. That's the truth. That's where people are deceived. Nothing we accomplish in this life matters unless it's for God. It's all for now because in the end you lose your soul. And I just want to end in this. I, Father, Lord God, I pray for Bryson DeChambeau, every one of these golfers on the PGA Tour, that you'd wake them up, Lord, that you'd show them they're on the road to hellfire, that they need to repent, and if they're knowingly involved in the occult and lying and know that these things are rigged, that they repent and come clean. And I ask you, Lord, that you show them they're on the road to hell, show them dreams and visions of hell. God, they're in the near-death experience testimonies, Lord. Do whatever it takes to get their attention, to show them their accomplishments in this life mean nothing. All that matters is where are we going to be in eternity. Are we going to be in heaven with you, Lord God Almighty? Are we going to be in hellfire in Jesus Christ's mighty name? So God bless everybody. I'll talk to you real soon.